Hello, everyone. My name is Xin Yang. 大家好，我是杨鑫。I work at VMware in the cloud storage team. I'm also a co-chair in CNCF Tag Storage and a co-chair in Kubernetes Sig Storage. Here is my co-speaker, Nick. Hello, my name is Nick Ren. 大家好，我是任玉泉。I come from Bedans, and I am now focusing on Kubernetes-related work. Thanks, Nick. Today we will talk about how to keep persistent volumes healthy for stateful workloads. Here is today's agenda. We will first talk about what problems we could encounter after volume is provisioned. Then we will introduce the volume health monitor feature. We will give a demo of the existing functionalities of the feature. Then we will talk about what we are working on in Kubernetes 1.23 release to improve this feature. And finally, we will talk about what we are planning to do in the future. So uh, let's see what could happen to your volume after it is provisioned. As shown here, we have an application running using a stateful set with three replicas. It has three pods, each is using a PVC. Everything looks perfect for a while, but then one day something happened. An admin was working on something and made a mistake by accident. And as a result, the volume was deleted from the storage system. In any case, the admin didn't realize that he or she did something wrong that could affect applications running on the platform. So on the surface, everything looked fine because Kubernetes does not check what happened to the underlying volume on the storage system after it is provisioned and used by a pod Everything looked normal until when the application tried to write to the volume. Then, of course, it failed. Now the user tried to figure out what happened by checking the logs, but there are no clear messages that indicate the volume was deleted. So the user opened the ticket with the infrastructure team. Then the infrastructure team started to troubleshoot the problem. It is not easy for them to root cause the problem either, as there isn't enough information in the logs. So it's going to take a while for the real problem to be discovered. There are other possible failures as well. The admin may have removed the disk for maintenance or replacement without knowing that it has an impact to the running applications. The disk that the volume resides on could fail. There may be configuration issues with the underlying storage system that affect the volume's health. The volume could be out of capacity, so app can no longer write the volume until the volume is expanded. The disk may be degrading, which affects its performance. There are other possible problems that could happen to the volume after it is provisioned and used by a pod. For local volumes, if the node where the local volumes resides fails, the volume also does not exist anymore. There may be rewrite I.O. errors. The file system on the volume may be corrupted. The file system may be out of capacity. Volume may be unmounted by accident outside of Kubernetes. There could be other issues that are not captured here. So how do we solve these problems and improve user experience? 
to solve this problem, we introduced an alpha feature called volume health monitoring. Without volume health monitoring, Kubernetes has no knowledge of what happened to the underlying volumes on the storage system after a PVC is provisioned and used by a pod. With this feature, CSI driver can communicate with storage systems and find out what happens to the volumes and communicate back to Kubernetes. So Kubernetes can report events on PVCs or pods if volume conditions become abnormal. This feature includes two parts. There is an external volume house monitoring controller that is a sidecar deployed with the CSI driver to monitor volume health from the controller side. It reports events to the PVC when abnormal condition is detected. Kubelet also monitors volume health from the node side. It reports events to the pod when abnormal volume condition is detected. So here we have a CSI deployment example that shows various Kubernetes components, the CSI driver and the storage system that is used to persist the data on the volumes. Here we have Kube controller manager on the master node. CSI driver controller plugin is deployed together with Kubernetes CSI external provisioner, external attacher, and external health monitor sidecars. Note that the CSI driver controller pod does not have to run on the same node as the Kubernetes master, but it is recommended to run on dedicated control plane nodes. The Kubernetes CSI sidecars are watching Kubernetes API objects, such as persistent volume claims, persistent volumes, volume attachments, to detect, create volume, attach volume requests. The set cars call the CSI driver and the CSI driver communicates with the storage system to complete those volume operations. The external health monitor controller works differently from other set cars. It periodically calls the CSI driver to retrieve volume health information from the underlying storage systems. On Kubernetes worker nodes, we have Kubelet and the CSI driver uh, node plugin deployed together with the node driver registrar sidecar container. Node driver registrar fetches driver information using node get info from a CSI endpoint and it registers the CSI driver with the Kubelet on a node. Kubelet directly issues the CSI node get info, node state volume, and node publish volume calls against CSI drivers to get info and mount volumes. Kubelet also periodically calls node get volume stats to get volume stats information, including volume health information. Now let's take a closer look of the external house monitor controller. This controller calls either list volumes or controller get volume CSI RPCs and reports volume condition abnormal events with messages on PVCs if abnormal volume conditions are detected. If the CSI driver supports list volumes and volume condition controller capabilities, it must implement controller RPC list volumes and report the volume condition in response. If a CSI driver supports get volume and volume condition controller capabilities, it must implement the controller RPC controller get volume and report the volume condition in the response. If a CSI driver supports uh, both list volumes and get volumes, and volume condition controller capabilities, 
In that case, only list volumes CSI RPC will be invoked by the external house monitor controller uh, due to performance considerations. There is also a node watcher component in the controller. If the enable node watcher flag is set to true when deploying the external house monitor controller, node failure events will be watched. So when a node failure event is detected, an event will be reported on the PVC to indicate that pods using this PVC are on a failed node. The controller side volume monitoring has been alpha since Kubernetes 1.19 release. Now let's take a look of the volume house monitoring feature from the node side. When Wooden House was first introduced in 1.19, there was an external house monitoring agent that monitors house on the node side. In 1.21, we made a design change to avoid duplicate CSI RPC calls. Kubelet already calls node get volume stats to retrieve volume metrics such as available, total, and use. Capacity. In addition to that, now it also retrieves volume health condition through node get volume stats CSI RPC call and reports volume condition abnormal events with messages on pause if abnormal volume conditions are detected. Only CSI drivers with volume condition node capability support volume health monitoring in Kubelet. We added a new alpha feature gate called CSI Voting House in 1.21 release to introduce this feature in Kubelet. Here is how voting condition is defined in the CSI spec. If there is a problem with the volume or the third system, the abnormal field in the voting condition should be set to true. There is also a, a message field that you can use to add additional information to explain uh, what the abnormal condition is. Note that if a volume is not found on the storage system, the abnormal field should be set to true so that an event can be reported on the PVC, which is still in the Kubernetes cluster. So now I'm going to hand it over to Nick. He's going to show us a demo. Okay, thank you, Xing. Yeah, as, as Xing said, that we created a demo to visually show what the volume health monitor can do right now. So we expected that it can send a normal volume events to the port. Okay, Xing, could you help click the video? Yeah, first we, uh, let's, we will need to set up a Kubernetes cluster locally using the local app cluster script provision in Kubernetes repo. And the Kubernetes version I choose is 1.19. I made some changes to the deployment fires in order to set up the testing environment and run the demo correctly. I will summarize it, the changes later and we can ignore this right now. Yeah, and maybe it will this oh it will take some time to get the cluster ready. Yeah. Yeah, the local cluster is ready. And then let's create some CSI containers and the host path plugin drivers as well, using the deployment fires from the CSI driver host path repository, and and PV data in the host path in the host is is in this folder. Yeah, run the deploy script, and all the containers will be created.
Okay, so after that, we will create a storage class and a PVC and as well, and a port as well. So let's create the storage class and the PVC. Okay, we can see that the PVC is created and, and the one PV is dynamically provisioned by the, by the host pass driver. And let's describe the PV. Yeah, we can see it is dynamic provision by the host path driver. And we create a port using that PVC. Okay, we can see that the port is created. And is it running now? Okay, then let's delete the mount pass. Okay, after delete after we're deleting the mount pass, we expected that the volume health monitor can send abnormal events to the port. Okay, so let's describe the port. I can know one event right now. So it may take several several seconds to send to let the volume health monitor send abnormal events. Okay, still no abnormal events. Yeah, okay, the abnormal events is here. So we can see the, the, the abnormal events at the monitor works as expected. Okay, next please. Okay, here I summarized the changes I made to the deployment fires. So uh, since the since some storage driver containers need privilege security option, so I assigned a low privilege flag to true for API server. This is the only change I made for, for Kubernetes. And another one, I made a small change to the host pass plugin YAML fire too. Uh, and I changed the CSI provisioner uh, image version to version 3.0.0 and the previous the previous version has some bugs. Yeah. Uh, and and I use this, I use this YAML files and deploy the deploy the containers and set up the local environment and we can run the demo correctly. So if you are interested in this feature, you can test this in your environment too. Okay, next please. Okay, uh, since I just know that the node side monitor component is true black, but actually we create an external agent which is responsible for node side monitoring work at the beginning. But finally, we decided to move all agent work to true black. So for now, Kubelite will be responsible for checking volume health conditions periodically and sending abnormal events if it finds problems. Also, we are now trying to let Kubelite emit metrics too. And, and this will target alpha version in 1.23 Kubernetes version. Okay, next please. Okay, apart from the current work, we are now also discussing what we can do in the future for volume health monitor. The most important topic we are talking about is automatic reaction to unhealthy volumes. I listed some cases here. So for example, if one node breaks down and we have suitable ports with local PVs running on that node, so what can we do? We waiting for more than five minutes for Kubernetes to delete the pause. So although we can delete this pause, but since they are using local PVs, the newly created pause will get stuck in pending state all the time if the node cannot recover. So what, what we can do, oh, another option we can do is delete, delete the pause and the PVCs as well so that we can have the chance to schedule the new pods to other nodes. Also, another case is if the volume is out of capacity, 
maybe we want to resize the volume automatically in order to avoid the data loss. Also, if the underlay volume is deleted by mistake, uh, maybe we prefer to deleting the relate delete the related op applications automatically. If we have the ability to do reactions, maybe we can. Another thing we can we want to do is support push mechanism to to customize the drivers can report problems by themselves. Maybe you will need to add a new PV or PVC status condition to indicate whether the underlay volume is healthy or not. And the reaction part can react to this status condition. And some users are asking for this feature too. So maybe uh, there are maybe some other important features we need, we need to add for volume health monitor. So we can discuss this offline if you have any ideas. Okay, next, please. Okay, and, and we added some resources here. I wanna say that if you are interested, please join us together to make this feature better. You can try this feature if you would need it. You can report your problems when you deploy or use it. And it would be super great if you can contribute your proposal or code to solve this problem. Thank you.